Today's lesson we're going to learn to draw Boer Rutherford diagrams. We'll make use of the periodic table supplied by PBS. The information that we can get from the periodic table is essential if we're going to draw Boer Rutherford diagrams. We can gain the number of protons. We can figure out the number of electrons. We can calculate the number of neutrons. We can determine the number of electron orbitals, that is, the places where the electrons are located, and actually look at how many electrons are in that outer valence shell. The Bohr Rutherford diagram is comprised of the nucleus in the middle. This is where we find the protons and the neutrons. It's made up of electron orbitals, that is, the area of space surrounding the nucleus where we find the electrons, and the actual electrons themselves. But how do we get this information from our periodic table? If we take the element hydrogen found in the legend of the periodic table, we can see that the atomic number is in the upper left hand corner, and that indicates the number of protons. We know that the atomic weight is a combination of the number of, of the mass of the protons and the mass of the neutrons, and this is an average. This is why sometimes it's not a whole number. For our purposes, we'll round that to the nearest whole number. If we subtract the number of protons from that total mass, we can calculate the number of neutrons. Depending on which period in the periodic table we find the element, this indicates to us the number of electron shells. So those elements, hydrogen and helium, found in the first period would have electrons occurring in that first orbital. Subsequently, those in the second period have electrons in the first and the second period, those in the third have all three, and we'll go so far as to look at those in the fourth period, they would have electrons found in all four orbitals, filling from the first, then the second, then the third, and so on. Okay, let's take an element. Consider hydrogen. Hydrogen's found here in the first period, so we know that it will have electrons in that first shell. Well, what can we learn from, its, from the periodic table? We know that there is one proton, so if we were to go ahead and fill in that there would be one proton. If we were to look at the atomic mass and we, hope we uh, rounded it to the nearest whole number, that would be the total of one minus the one proton would equal zero neutrons. So hydrogen is pretty unique in the sense that it has no neutrons. We also know that for every proton, there is one electron. So let's grab an electron and put it in that orbital. Here's our finished product. And we'll often see the name of the element or the symbol of the element and its atomic mass written at the bottom. Let's try another one. Let's take a look at beryllium for a second. So if we were to say how many uh, protons or how many neutrons were in beryllium, determine its location on the periodic table. It was here in the second period. So we know there will be two electron orbitals. We can calculate the number of neutrons. So let's go ahead and draw it. So here's our nucleus. We to find the atomic number is four and write that there's four protons. We know the total mass was nine. If we subtract the four, we calculate that there are five neutrons. Now all that's left to do is figure out how many electrons. Well, we know that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons, so there'd be four. We'll put one there and one there because there are only two in that first orbital. Then we'll put one up there and one down there. There's our four electrons equal to our number of protons. Remembering that we try to put electrons in our diagrams opposites first because like charges repel. Now's your chance to do some practice. So go ahead and try and draw the Boer-Rutherford diagrams for the first 20 elements of the periodic table.